Deva. Hey, William. Oh my goodness. When I say OGAE, what do you think of? I think of OGAE Second Chance 2020. Yes, we oui, we. Oui. <laughs> Even France's OGAE club as the organisation uh, des amateur. What is it? Organisation Générale des Amateurs de Eurovision. They, they, yay! That's the official fan club, and they were hosting this year's OGAE Second Chance contest, which is for songs that did not make it out of the national selection. Each club nominates a song and then there's like a second chance Eurovision where you go through vote for your favorites and the winner of this year's edition is from Sweden. Who is it? Anna Bergendahl. Yes, Kingdom, Kingdom Come. Come. Honey, shall we talk about it? Let's do this. Oh, hold on girl. I love your love for OGAE from Colombia, Venezuela, <laughs> Chile. It's not just about the clubs in Europe, and I think sometimes we forget. There's a whole rest of the world. That's what I love about it. Which is very you. important. That's what I. You, you pay homage, guys. You gotta check those videos out <laughs> on our YouTube channel. You pay homage to these clubs. Love yeah. them so much. In any case, let's start by going through the top five. These are the results of the OJE Second Chance Contest, the official results. First place was Sweden, Anna Bergendahl, Kingdom Come. Second place, Finland, Erika Vickman, Cicciolina. Third place, Elodie, Andromeda, that is Italy, y'all. Fourth place, Albania, Elvana Jata with Meitana. And fifth place, one last time, it is Mr. Rain Alexander. Make it rain! Woo -woo. Now, Deppin, of the songs in the contest, do you think Sweden had the best one? Oh, Sweden is up there. Sweden is up there. I, I really like, you know, Anna Bergendahl is the girl that never made it to the ball, but you know what? She's given us great consolation prizes over the years. Ashes to Ashes. Love that. I loved the staging. Love everything Mystical, about magical. it. Mystical, magical. The song was beautiful. I wouldn't have minded that even going last year. And you know, that was, uh, yeah. 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 And Kingdom Come. I mean, it really was was definitely one of my favorite melodies. Melody Festival is a tough one because you know you can't really have one favorite. You tend to have multiple favorites. And for different reasons. I think that Kingdom Come for me is not the strongest song, but the staging was excellent and elevated. And this is a TV show. At the end of the day, this is a TV show and this fit the bill. Mm. It's not my winner of the OJE Second Chance Contest. For me, it was a toss up between Meitana from Elana Jata in Albania. Mm. I think that song had the potential to be great if they had cut it, you know, cut it down to the three minutes. Because you know at Festival of Congress, everything is like exceeding three minutes. And um, I loved the kind of traditional sounds made modern and sexy by amazing Elana. And then I also loved Erica Vickman and Cicciolina. Mm. But yeah, I, I see it the flaw good. in both tracks, you know? Like, the staging the for Erica was, was it for Erica. so yeah. But the song as a track, I still listen to it. It's one of, I don't have many Eurovision and um, national final songs on my Spotify playlist because I try to like diversify my listening. Because if, you know what I mean? Like I watch, I consume Eurovision music mostly on YouTube. For some, I just, I love, that's how I consume it. Or, also, that's what it gears itself for. Yeah, for viewing. You know, yeah, viewing. Whereas on my Spotify, I'm You watch Eric the Vickman. song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? But Erica Vickman, mm. she's on my Spotify, girl, and she's killing it. Who was the pick from Dance Melody Grand Prix? Denmark's contestant finished sixth. Her name is Jasmine Rose featuring Roxor Loops. They didn't pick Wigfield? Human. They did not pick Wigfield. Okay. Well, Devin, I, I want to ask you this. Romania rocks in one of our favorite national finals of the year. It was mm -hmm. totally stacked. They came eighth. With Cherry Red. Yeah. Eighth, though. Colors would have pushed it higher. No. Cherry Red was the correct song, and it should have got higher. In the Wee Blogs poll, Romania came fifth. Let me actually quickly go through the Wee Blogs results. First was Albania, second was Finland, third was Sweden, fourth was Italy, and fifth was Romania. Our readers pushed Norway from fifth to thirteenth, just an FYI. Mm. So you wouldn't have picked Cherry Red. I would have picked Colors. I would have picked Colors. Interesting. I mean, it's a good song, but I think Cherry Red is just so sexy and mine. Alive, my oh, I, I really like it. It's so soft, it's soothing, it's... it's She's I, good, is the point. She is excellent. She will she have a great excellent. song in 2020. Now, Devin, I want to point this out to you. The biggest grower among the Wee Wee Blogs viewers and readers was Jaguar Jones Australia. She finished 10th with Wee Wee Blogs readers, but she finished 18th in the actual OJE poll. What do you make of that? I wouldn't have picked her. What? 
No. Who would you have picked? Vanessa Amorosi, Lessons of Love, babe. It was good. Lessons she can sing. of Love. She can sing, but live, I felt she was a little shrieky. A little. Do you know how many ARIA nominations she has? You know what? You may have run fast in 2012, but if you want to make the Olympic team in 2020, you gotta run. Okay? You gotta run fast now. I don't care about her ARIA nominations, I care about her performance. And if it's, it's in the shrieky. DNA, you can't argue against it, babe. I liked Keep the car crash. I think was, there was a car crash on stage, right? I mean, she's ripping off her oh, that, was, that was drama. That was... That was, uh, do not get in a road accident with her, okay? Because she will be making sure your insurance covers her. That's all I got to say. All right. Who... Supernova, bring your try to buy. Well, Estonia did not do so well. Uh, they... Latvia. Oh, so, ha, 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 Heartbeats. Why did they pick her? It's a good song. I like that. It's a good song. I think it's Edward, song. Edgar's Krellis, which I China was so much stronger. Um, he, he's wonderful. He's wonderful. I think maybe this relates to the fact that these are OJE clubs picking, and she, of course, was part of Ars Min Yeki in 2014. And I think oftentimes, you know, the OJE club, Eurovision kind of um, super fans have that history. Do you know what I mean? So it's much more embedded in their decisions. It perhaps? explains Anna Bergendahl as well. I was about to know, say. Because, you know, it's like, oh, you know, she's one of us, so therefore we'll throw her a bone. But you know what? We kind of, yeah. I love her, though. I really love Katrina Din Dinamata. She, she's actually a really good friend of mine. Oh, can we quickly? I just yeah, want to read you a comment. While we're, while we're on the OJE topic, a commenter who named themselves OJE writes, OJE is filled with middle-aged people, and the winner just confirms it. Anna was older audiences' favorite in Sweden. That's a very ageist comment. It is quite, and both, both of us fit the demographic. <laughs> I'm nearly 60, but listen, I think that there is something to that, though, that OJE voting does tend to be different than kind of like, I don't want to say youth voting, or like, it, it is a particular demographic, and that's not throwing shed. It's not. I was in the OJE a few years ago. It's like, it's a different... Are you not in it now? No, because I... No. I, oh, I don't... Really? I, are you in OJE? I thought you were rest of the world, boo. No, no, no. no. I think <laughs> in England. Oh, because I'm American. I see. No, 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 no. Um, but anyways, um, let's... That's interesting, because you love OJE so much. OJE Colombia. Yeah. OJE oh, oh, Venezuela. I love the passion. I feel like a lot of the clubs that are far away, I really feel like... It's wonderful they keep this passion going despite being so distant and not being able to access mm. the competitions. Because I can't imagine what that'd be like to be so far away. Because to fly to Colombia is not cheap, is it? So, but Colombians do fly. Oh, they do. There's great devotion. Our Diego Pimpa's a great example. But, like, you know, it's not cheap. And that devotion, I, I just respect the devotion. But anyways, the focus of this is this poll. This poll. Were there any other countries who you think chose, in your mind, the wrong representative? Portugal, babe. Portugal. I needed Cubismo Evisado from Judas. That should have been oh, the representative. They went with Barbara Tinoco Passapartu, the French language realness. I remember there was a lot of hype about Barbara. We enjoyed her song, both of us. Yeah, but... We both enjoyed her song. I think her song was better than the one that was chosen for Eurovision 2020, to be honest. Yeah. Definitely. Um, without a shade of a doubt. Yeah, yeah. Um, Elisa, right? Yeah. What was the song? Adiesa C. No. <laughs> I'm just um, I don't remember, to be honest. And I love the choice of Poland. Lucy. Oh, they're good. They're good. They're good. They're lovely. I really like them. They're really nice. Well, Devin, I want to wrap this up. There are a lot of people who are upset that Estonia, in the official poll, Estonia with Jagup, who was a pre contest. It should have been Inga. Came 14 um, with Beautiful Lie. You don't think he should have gone? I think Inga was stronger. I think Yagup was braver. Because it's so, it's quite out there. That performance was out there. It wasn't one of my, I didn't really, it didn't speak to me, but it was out there. And so I respect like the kind of artistic vision behind it, I guess you could say. I, do you know, I just remember Esti Lau being tough this year. We were in Tirana. Oh, uh, I don't were... think it was tough. <gasps> I don't think it was strong. No, as in like a really tough listen. Oh yes, tough listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, thought you meant like a tough competition. No, no. Um, we were in Tirana listening to it, and it was like, oh, oh it was I, painful. I liked the woman, the Schlager woman. 
Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She, she, she should have gone. I mean, she was, that was fun. She was, there was personality. It was like a disco track. Oh, it? my God. She reminded that. me of like a Corolla of Estonia. Oh, so much fun. Ah, she was good. I really love this contest. I think this is such a fun contest. because You love OGA eBay. I love this contest. In particular. I think because they do a song contest for like main, like mainstream mm -hmm. non, is it non European mm -hmm. artists? Or mm -hmm. like, and then they do the second chance contest. The second chance contest is my favorite. I know you love it. So who are you going to dedicate next year's OGAE to? What are the other OGAE? I think Chile is actually the next is one. Is there OGA Chile? Yeah, yeah, it's Chile. Chile's next. OGA Chile. <laughs> We're going to speak to you. We're gonna speak to you. Is this champ? Oh, we are on TikTok. We are on Spotify even. And interestingly, we have this discussion on Spotify. And You mean me, the podcast? Yeah. Which is also podcast. on Apple. Yeah, it's also and on TuneIn. It's already yeah, yeah. And it's not the same. <laughs> no, it's a slightly different con. Basically, we're still trying to figure out all these channels, y'all. Because a part of it was like, we should have just filmed ourselves recording this like put the microphone here and this could have been the podcast as well do you know honestly some it, people the reason i listen to a podcast is like if i'm walking down the street i don't want to have my phone like i often take walks so i do my ten thousand steps a day and i don't want to be walking like this so i put some audio on or a podcast you so do that's ten thousand steps yeah it's not that hard if you make it a goal every day, either wake up a little bit early or like, you no, know what? It's important. They've done a lot of studies step in. Like there's a real difference in like life outcomes, like whether you live or die after a certain age. And um, yeah, have a Google. Yeah, but. I follow uh, Alex Crockford on Instagram. He's a personal trainer and he's always banging on about 10,000 steps. And like, I started doing it. I feel so much better. Don't you see I'm thinner? Listen, but the trouble with the podcast and I'm having to duplicate what I'm saying, except it's not a duplicate. No, because we covered something different topics. We're, yeah. So, we're also on... We are on the social media. <laughs> just, just Google. In any case, we'll see you later. Bye! Bye.